Hello folks and uh, before we get started today I need to tell you something and that something is that this is a sponsored video. No I am not joking uh, today's video has been sponsored by PCBWay and uh, as the video progresses hopefully uh, you will be able to see why uh, that they have become uh, very instrumental to me in what we are trying to do here. Uh, there will be a link in the description to them and uh, I will in some of the segments that you will see uh, during the video speak about them. Uh, just to be very clear, while they have sponsored the board and so forth that I'm using here, uh, they have in no way given me any directions or terms or instructions or anything so uh, I will be speaking the very same way I just wish to express my gratitude uh, to them and basically show uh, a really cool piece of technology uh, that they have that is going to let us work away on our Model 3 drive units so now that we have that out of the way, hopefully to the satisfaction of all the various um, whatever terms and whatever else that need to be fulfilled, I um, want to talk to you and give you an update on our Model 3, uh, both front and rear drive unit, um, I guess reverse engineering, hacking, cracking uh, project whatever you wish to call it. It has been a while uh, since we have updated you on this. There have been various, as usual, forces working on me, um, but we're back to having a look at this now. As I say, uh, big thanks to PCBWay, uh, both for sponsoring the video and for their help in kind of choosing what would be the best way uh, to get this little adapter board made now when we left you last time i believe that we had reverse engineered about 90 percent of the pins on the tms 320f 28377d microcontroller uh, that would normally be the brains behind our model 3 uh, drive unit and you will also recall that I had removed uh, the kind of mod chip device uh, that I had originally put in there that had all the little wires trailing all over the PCB. And it just wasn't uh, something that I was comfortable with at all uh, when I went back at it. So we had all those pins were reverse engineered and I went away and I designed a little PCB uh, that would take the place of the uh, package, which I think is a 177 pin uh, package for the TMS microcontroller. I had that made just in a normal FR4 uh, material um, and using just ordinary pads around the edge of the board. I had it made, uh, it was fairly thin, I got it down to one millimeter thick and with a few little uh, demo boards that I had here that kind of let me practice soldering and things like that and it really didn't, it just didn't work out in that material and I went away from it for a while and I got pulled away doing all kinds of different things um, PCB way came on scene and I think I drove them a bit mad because I was constantly going away and they were trying to contact me and I was trying to contact them and we went around in rings but um, what you're going to see now is basically the result of that uh, it's gonna be a pretty long video so sorry PCB way this won't be a little five minute video probably be um, 40 or 50 minutes sorry uh, where you will see me going from removing 
the TMS uh, microcontroller uh, from this inverter board and you will I guess conclude with me um, soldering the newly arrived mod board um, onto one of the little demo boards uh, before we attack the uh, drive unit inverter itself. So that's enough of me talking, let's get into some of the clips. Um, the first of these clips has been filmed months ago and the most recent one was actually filmed yesterday. So it's a bit of an amalgamation um, of what we've been doing here. So I do hope you enjoy. Starting up that. Alrighty, so let us see how badly we can screw this process up. So, phase one, take ourselves a scalpel, brand new blade, and we're going to cut the legs. So let's, let's go in there and have a look. And I've already cut one here just to prove the, prove the point. So the procedure is really that we want to be using as little heat in this process as we possibly can. Now, the reason for that is kind of several fold. See on the back of the PCB, there's a good few components and we would really rather not like to um, have those components come off. That is my first concern. And my second concern is that this being definitely a, you know, a fairly major multi-layer PCB, um, and it will be, you know, probably something in the region of at least eight layers, I would think, possibly more even. Um, that when you apply heat to a multi-layer board in particular, um, it causes it to warp. And when we have a high density, you know, fine pitch parts like this on here, um, that's not good for them to be experiencing a warping uh, printed circuit board. Now this is going very well. I've already made my way through quite a few pins here. So I'm just basically trying to cut them at the point where they bow out the most. use the uh, jaws line again here's to swimming with bow-legged women chiefy well, there's definitely no going back to the old musk ways now folks you know, well and truly be now yeah that worked perfectly now so as you might expect, with a normal, you know, QFP package, this would, at this point, be ready to just pop off there. Uh, but in this case, it won't, because as we say, in underneath this is our um, power pad. And so it uh, doesn't want to do that for us just yet. Now, next step is we want to remove the... Um, legs so the bits of the legs that are sitting on the pads so that's going to be our next move now to do that uh, I'm going to try a new idea uh, it is this thing it's called chip quick and it is a very low melting point alloy that in theory we can mix some of it in here with the uh, solder and it'll lift off those pads for us so we're going to we're going to give this I'll try. Now, so to do that, I have a fairly fine tip on my soldering iron. It's got a little hook shape on it, so I'm hoping that'll just let me be able to, you know, hook those guys out of there. 
I keep the the iron temperature fairly low. Uh, again, the less heat we're putting in there, the better. So I'm going for about 330 degrees. We'll uh, put a little bit of flux along there just for fun. There it goes. Now I'm going to break out the uh, break out the chip quick, and uh, we'll see, as we say, just how bad of an example for you guys that I can be in the uh, chip removal uh, game. Now this stuff's quite expensive. But that being said, um, I don't imagine you would need all that much of it. So we will be trying it out in this kind of a, kind of a looks like solder. But uh, from what I can see, it very much behaves not like solder in this sense. So, okay. So I'm just mix. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, that's doing something there now. Again, the muscu is going to cause us some difficulties here. Definitely, uh, definitely getting them off. They're pretty much just, yeah, I think they're actually all mixed up. I think the legs are all mixed up into that little blob that I have there. Oh yeah, this is working perfectly. It's all turning into a big, um, I can just kind of walk the blob along here. Eventually it's going to get full of legs, I imagine, so. say folks it's a pretty rare thing that one of my ideas works and uh, that has worked absolutely uh, just cleaned off all those legs there without breaking any kind of a sweat and I've only got soldering iron set at about 320 degrees at the minute so that's it that side's done basically now we cleaned them up more with some desolder braid and that when we have the when we have the um the package removed so let me just go ahead there and I'll just stick in a little bit more flux on this side and we'll uh, you know, let's see if we can repeat the uh, repeat the experience so okay position myself a little better and we will just want to start down here really mm. Yeah, okay. Gotta say, folks, um, that is just absolutely perfect in there now, both of these sides. We've got all of our pads. There's, like, there's certainly none of them lifted. Um, there's no sign of any, you know, kind of stress on them. So 
All right, let's work our way around the back and get a bit more flux on here. I am going to film this whole thing because I think it's, um, it's kind of worth seeing. I always think of these as kind of like the guys doing the bomb disposal in the movies when, you know, one of them cuts a wire and, well, if he's not dead, then the other guy cuts the wire and so on. Until, I guess, someone cuts the wrong wire. And then they know, well, don't cut the red wire. Never cut the red wire, folks. It's a movie. Um, it's kind of movie logic. 101, as they say, isn't it? Never cut the red wire. Uh, yeah, again. Like, that is now 176 legs removed here. Um, and the ones where I cut down from the top, are, that's definitely the way to go. That's what we'll do on the front uh, drive unit. That been said, as you know, there's no damage here, other than the two that I rather foolishly did slightly damage uh, when I was trying to lift the legs without the benefit of the whole chip quick system. Um, let's turn off the soldering iron there now. So, yeah, uh, verdict on this stuff is it works. And, uh, yeah, so that gets the Damien... Uh, that gets the Damien um, seal of approval. Chip quick. Um, who makes this stuff? I don't know. I got this from Amazon, but I think it's like there's various other suppliers. I know Farnell have it as well. Uh, you will get a view of the bald spot here now because I am going to just go in with the very fancy magnifier just to. Uh... Oh man, that is just perfect. Watch the bald spot. Yeah, the ones where I cut down from the top, that's really it. Those pads are just perfect. Uh, there's absolutely nothing, um, no damage there. So, pew, P-H-E-W, and words to that effect. Now, time for phase two. Now, phase two, we are going to need some... We are going to need some isopropyl alcohol and some buds, which I'm going to uh, cotton buds. Because what I want to do is I want to clean off around the area there. And the reason we're going to clean off around the chip is that we need to remove, I guess, the... Um, we have to remove, I guess, Elon's body here. We've cut off his limbs us uh, protecting the uh, the precious pads but what I want to do now is just kind of just clean away any of that old residue that's there with some of our favorite isopropyl It's just getting that. See the musk goo and the flux and all of those other video nasties are being uh, soaked up there. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, there's kind of, there's always like there's bits here from where I was soldering on test points and all that kind of thing. So we'll uh, we get rid of that. That should do the trick for now. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because the next thing we want to do is put a little bit of Captain tape uh, around the um, around some of the components here. And I want to do that because, unfortunately, let's say this is the power pad. Power pad? Power, power pad. Or there's various kind of... I guess kind of trade names and stuff for it, but it basically means that there's a large ground pad underneath the uh, underneath the uh, device. So what I want to do is just captain tape around here because we are unfortunately going to have to put some heat in here. 
Now the plan is, because we have the, because we have the legs taken off, I don't need to play the heat around the, uh, you know, the whole area or do any of that kind of thing with it. Um, that I just need to hit the very center of the uh, package with the heat. And I think the way that I'm going to go is that I'm going to put the heat station up pretty darn high. Um, I'm going to put the heat station up pretty darn high. Let's turn it on for a start anyway. Um, and I'm just going to hit the center of the... Uh, I'm just going to hit the center of the um, device here. But before I do that, where did my flux disappear? To? Here it is. I'm going to keep this kind of downward tilt on it. And I'm going to whack in a decent bit of flux there. What I hope is going to happen is that once I heat the center of this, we'll be able to, that the capillary action, because the legs are now gone, is that we can pull that flux in, soften that solder in the middle here as quick as we, we can and get this, uh, basically get this part off here um, without causing any additional damage um, or any stresses to the musk board because we don't want the stress Elon out. We want to make this as painless a transition to open source living uh, for Mr. Musk as we possibly can. Now I'm at 400 degrees. I'm going to go up to about, I'm going to go up to about 450, maybe even a little higher. There's 480. I'm going to let the, uh, I'm not going to go for a huge amount of air, I think. I'm going to let the thing stabilize. I don't want a huge splash of air because when I hit this, that that air is going to splash off like this. So, okay, here we go. First time. Wish me luck. Okay, the flux is starting to uh, starting to go. So I'm going to take that as a positive. Now, obviously, you wouldn't normally do this um, because we're going to basically roast the die in here you know which would be a pretty bad thing to do but considering this chip is dead um, I don't really care we're doing this real time I'm not going to crop or edit this video because it'll uh, it's not as if it's going to um, reach the masses anyway. Uh, but I'd rather we see in real life what, uh, what ultimately happens here. It's a shame we can't get the chip quick you know, into that, because it absolutely eat it off. Uh, you know, we probably realistically, we can't, I don't think. Well, the good news is, a little bit of flex in the package here. I'm just trying to get that heat into the real center of that. It is via stitched onto the back, so, you know, that's going to... It's going to take some of the heat out, unfortunately. Nothing really that we can do about this. The problem with these devices is that even if I got the head for the station that has the four kind of curtains, um, I suspect we'd have still been in trouble because of this power pad design here in the middle.
And the additional challenge here is of course that um to be careful of my pads here i'm at the corner so the additional challenge is that the musk and so on is probably holding it down Nothing I can do, unfortunately, but just let the heat go in there. It's um, it's not really something that I've much by way of control over. I'll try and just get another little bit of flux in there. But it's doing what it can, I'm sure. Right. 500 degrees now which is the maximum that the, that the station can go to Just trying to keep the heat on the actual uh, heat on the package rather than going anywhere else. It's kind of seems to be on the move. Oops. Yeah, I don't know whether it's. Oh, well, actually, what's happening here now is we've. Um, yeah, I think what we've managed to do. We've managed to actually separate the package, which is good news. Uh, it's actually good news, folks. Uh, it's very good news. All right, so what's happened here now? Oh, I was looking for my um, for my tweezers. We've basically split the package open. And uh, what you see in there is the actual die. Now, I'm going to put the hot air station away let it go into its cool down cycle um, interesting I wasn't quite expecting that to happen but I'm glad it did so good news let me just get my magnifier on my head here for a sec and uh, flashlight Alright, so good news is we have not lost any components off the back of the board. Just going to get my head in your way here now for a sec. Nor I might add, have we any damaged pads? There's no vias or tracks pulled or anything else um, that we'd be worried about. Now what I am going to do is while the board is warm, I'm going to put a kind of a kind of a kind of a larger chisel bit on the soldering iron. I'm going to let that warm up I'm to just tin this with a little bit of ordinary solder, just for a sec. Well, that was an unexpected kind of a bonus, folks. Um, because with this exposed, you guessed it, uh, we can now hit it, hopefully, with a bit of chip quick. So let's see if that plan works out for us. And if it does, then it's phase three time. Remember phase one was reverse engineering. Phase two is the removal of this package. Ooh, what is phase three? Now, 
I'm gonna just see if I can chip quick this guy. I don't know how practical that's gonna be, but I'll try and chip quick him. Definitely is getting chip quicked. Uh, Feels like it's kind of, yeah, it is getting pulled in underneath it. Um. <laughs> Hope I am, anyway. All right, so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna turn the soldering iron up to kind of normal temperatures here, and just see if, ah, there it is. Ah, 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 crapo, it's floating. Ah, 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 chip quick to the rescue, got it. There it is. There's our actual processor. Wow. Okay. We got them. All right. Let me just uh, soak up that solder here now with a bit of braid. I mean, you need a lot of braid. <laughs> just between the solder and the chip quick and everything else on here. Um, wow. Actually, epic. Be able to just sit him back in there. So it looks as if, yeah, we have lost one of those two damaged pads there. That's quite all right because there's an easy via to connect to. So that is not going to cause us any problems in the slightest. In fact, these two vias here will be easy to um, be easy to use. Um, so I guess. You know, I won't have to be doing that again. Won't have to be doing any more, you know, lifting up uh, legs on the on the device. So the device is now gone. There's no more device. And there we have it. Okay. So at this point, with the power switched back on. Uh, with our device removed for the first time, the good news is there's no shorts or anything else going on. We have our little red LED from the Diag 1 uh, going on there. And I finally got myself a network cable. I managed to get my multimeter uh, connected to our Keysight bench view here. So what I'm going to do, just uh, for fun here, is I want to try to confirm that our Things like our 3.3 volt rail and things like that are still working now that we no longer have a microcontroller uh, sending commands to our um, our main power supply chip. Now, I think if my memory serves, this guy here, nope, this guy here, there we go, so there's our there's our um, I.O. voltage on that pin. I'm pretty sure if we walk our way down here a bit. Um, so you'll see that's one of the PWM pins. It's at zero volts at the minute. That's interesting. Where did that come from? Yeah, that's pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This pin seven is floating up there quite a bit. There's probably some uh, pull downs and uh, pull ups that we're going to be missing here now uh, because of that. There's a Another PWM pin, I think. Ah, there's a IO voltage there now on that one. Let me uh, go ahead and just check my pin out here while I'm doing this. Be helpful if I knew what I was doing. So they're around, uh, I think it's around pin 15 and 16 that we should have. Uh, yeah, pin 15 should be VDD IO and pin 16 should be VDD. So we should have 3v3 on pin 15 
and 1v2 on pin 16. So let's see if that see if that holds true. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, we got 3v3 on pin 15. And 1v2, indeed, on pin 16. Smidge low, but that's probably because there's no draw on that line now. Uh, with the processor removed, uh, whereas there would be a draw on it. Uh, there would be a draw on the 3v3 line, because it's still running things, um, things on the board here. So that's... Yeah, there's 3v3. There's 1v2. Kind of spot these as well, because we can now get to... Uh, ah, there's one of my... There's one of my... Uh, I think that's my analog 3v3. Uh, that's extremely stable, even with nothing connected to it, as you can see there. Uh, so that's all very good. Means things are... Broadly working the way they're supposed to be. Yeah, there's another analog uh, supply. That's extremely steady. Okay, so, yeah. This is our famous line here. We're now on our output enable uh, on the 74245 here. So this is our TP27. We put our meter on that as you see we're definitely high on that as you would expect again just to remind people it's because we've no pwm going here it's a pin here somewhere that needs to be pulled high and and even remember the third thing oh the gate drive power supply has to be turned on but just wanted to uh just wanted to have a little look around here okay folks so Apologies for this one. The uh, sound in this clip got completely messed up. I'm not really sure what at all happened. But what we are going to be doing is unboxing our boards from PCBWay for the first time. I hadn't opened the box prior to this. I had been very tempted to, but I didn't. And uh, so what you're going to see here is pretty much me opening up the box and seeing the boards for the first time. And just basically I'm going to uh, describe to you um, that these are based on the, uh, I guess, the flexible PCB technology uh, from PCB Way. And... Uh, that is what we're going to see coming up hopefully right about now well no because i got all the silly packaging in there first um well it's not silly packaging I managed to keep them perfectly safe coming all the way from china and i got myself some stickers and uh, a free pen as well so that'll come in useful um so let's see uh, yes i've got yes the pen works <laughs> And uh, now I think it's time to get the little boards out of the uh, box here. Uh, it's kind of hard to believe even now, you know, as I'm looking at this again, that the little boards are just uh, literally about one square inch, about like 25.5, 25.4 millimeters uh, square. Uh, so we're going to get those out now as soon as I... Avoid slicing my fingers off. Um, so here we go. And there they are. Uh, very, very good stuff. And um, as you're going to see uh, very soon, uh, these little guys are going to be um, making this whole thing feasible for us. Uh, so let's get one of them out. Here we go, come on, get the fingers in there and take it out. There it is, uh, flexible PCB, four layer board, um, literally one square inch 
um, 0.2 millimeters thick it's got all those beautiful little gold fingers uh, going around the four edges that are going to uh, make all of this work out for us so okay again apologies that the original audio from this clip got uh, messed up but I just thought it's better to um, just to do something um, afterwards because it really it uh, it just sounded terrible so that's it folks there we are our new boards from PCB way and uh, let's get let's get to it okay folks so we're set up under my little cheapy microscope here so i'm going to try to not uh, knock the bench around too much because it'll uh, go out of focus so um this is actually quite amazing uh what i'm seeing here um the first thing is that just to give you guys some uh context here um this board is made using a flexible uh, PCB process. Um, so you can actually bend this. Uh, it's the same kind of a process, I guess, that you would see on FPC cables. So flexible printed circuit. Um, now, what drew me to using this process uh, for this board is down to the fact that it's extremely thin. Uh, this board is 0.2 millimeters thick and it is a four layer PCB. Um, and as you can see here, we have got these gold plated pads right out to the absolute edge of the board here. Now this was a process, uh, this was another, I should say, element of this process that drew me to it so when PCB way um, got in touch with me and wanted to uh, wanted to sponsor a board and sponsor a project and I got a look and to uh, see what they could do um, because I'd been struggling with a traditional FR4 board like the capabilities of it um, but when you see this, uh, <laughs> and you see how that is looking, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing that we have those gold plated pads here coming right out the very edge of the board. Um, we can see in the middle here we have our let me just straighten this up a bit absolutely useless at this stuff we've got our uh, pads here for our STM32 this is the 64 pin uh, version we've the big center grounding uh, pad here because we're replacing the TMS 320 F28377 uh, microcontroller and it has one of those big uh, center pads in there so folks uh <laughs> this is amazing stuff um i guess it's in one way uh, it, you know i'm not i'm not i guess yes this is a sponsored video yes pcb way you know reached uh, re reached out to me and have made this possible uh but by the same token, you know, if this wasn't uh, if this wasn't much good, I would be definitely saying it. Um, I don't really, you know, you you you, you guys know this is not. Uh, I'm not one of these kind of review channels or something that's constantly looking for somebody to, uh, you know, to to say something to me, um, or to give me something to talk about. Um, but this is, uh, yeah, this is pretty amazing. Uh, let me flip the little card over here. I 
let you see the back of it. Uh, just absolutely flabbergasted by this. What am I seeing here? Is that a little bit just a bit of dirt? I think, yeah, it's just a little bit of dirt, I think. Hang up. I'm going to just see if I can. Uh, yeah, it's just a little bit of dirt. The pad is still there. It's, not, or it's just a shadow, even, I think, possibly. Let me just try and shade it with the blade. Yeah, there you go. It's fine. Um, so there's our pad. And the one thing I love about this now is that all of my vias um, and all of this and the tracks are completely covered with a uh, solder mask. This is just an amazing kind of a process that I'm seeing here on such a small board. Uh, so, all right. And I guess just to, just to show you, I guess that it really is you know, flexible. I can literally just bend it. I can, you know, literally just bend the board like this. You know, sorry about my dirty hands. I've been uh, working on kind of car-related bits the last few days. Uh, but there it is, folks. So thank you, PCB Way. And we're going to be uh, sending some orders your way. You get it, PCB Way. We're going to be sending some pcb orders your way uh fairly soon um because we'll have some mods to make to this uh, but there it is all right so i think what i'm going to do next is i'm going to sit this little card just up on the drive unit inverter and we'll have a look and see um we'll have a look and see uh, how it looks. So stand by. All right, folks, so what I've done here is I've just sat uh, the board just onto the Model 3 drive unit where we removed the uh, TMS 320. And I'm hoping you're going to be able to see here, just um, to say I struggle with the whole microscope thing. Um, <laughs> if ever I needed, uh, uh, you know, I guess a someone to sponsor me for something else, it'd be a proper microscope, hint, hint. Anyway, uh, what we got today will have to do us. So, um, I'm hoping that you're gonna be able to see just how really perfectly that the fingers on the board match the pads um, on the, uh, on the I guess the you know the inverter motherboard now as I said I haven't you know soldered this in or even fluxed it or done anything like that uh, we're just really just having a look this is just to see uh, how this is gonna play out for us but I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be pretty much perfect um, I've really struggled to find a process or a, a, a way to make an adapter board and this flexible uh, system from PCB way seems to really have hit the spot here for me now. We'll know as I said I'm going to run a test um, on just a kind of a test footprint. We'll, electrically test it and do all that kind of thing before we uh, commit to mounting this into the inverter um, but I think you can let me just see if I can I am absolutely hopeless with this microscope here we go so we can just go over the far side there and you'll see there that it's just 
really does just line up perfectly. I probably could do with having it a little bit better lined up on that side. But you'll also see the STM32, I just have it kind of roughly sitting in the middle there. Um, I'll just pan over this way a little bit and we'll see there we have our little 0402 um, components uh, that will be there for the little filter circuit um, for the oh, what is it the resolver exciter and you'll see up here now where I have the damaged uh, pads uh, so I'll be ru running a little um, I'll be running a little repair uh, wire from this via just up to this pad here on the mod board. This one's probably okay. I can probably save that one, but that one got ripped off due to me being a Muppet. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm just super excited because I think we have a solution now for this uh, Model 3 system. Both the front and the rear uh, drive unit inverters will be able to fit with the same board. So once we kind of verify that the board will physically fit, uh, there's a few electrical changes I'm gonna make on the board. And then I'm gonna be ordering another batch of these from PCBWay. Uh, hopefully fully assembled for us uh, so we won't have to be doing any SMD assembly on here uh, but there it is like it's uh, it's quite amazing the way those pads are just lining up perfectly there um, so assuming that this solders nicely uh, I think this puts us in a good place. So let's see if I can uh, just give you a bit of a broader view here of what's going on. There we go. So you'll see there that we have our, get the microscope. I mean, you can actually see there, I can actually leave the microscope there. It's not doing any harm. So you can kind of see there that we've got our mod board and see where it's sitting. Got the STM32 sitting on it there. Um, so yeah, we're I think we're in a good spot folks. Oh forgot my sponsorship sticker crap. There we go uh, oh, Forgot you can't see the sponsorship sticker. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right um, I hope I'm doing this right because I've never had a sponsored video before so <laughs> anyway um, This is where we're at. I think this is gonna work um yeah, I think this is gonna work. So, next uh, part, uh, I guess we will be fitting this to a test board and seeing how that works out. But I just wanted to show you quickly, uh, probably not very quickly, knowing me, um, where things were. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm really super happy with this. Okay, folks. I don't know how this is going to turn out. It'll be badly knowing my, my look. But uh, what we are going to do is we're going to try to affix um, one of our new boards from PCBWay um, onto just this little test board. This is just a board I found on um, GitHub. Uh, it's a little kind of a, I guess, a breakout board for the 28377 uh, so it's got the same footprint obviously uh, so we are going to attempt number one to fix one of our mod boards to this basically to gain a little bit of experience now first thing I'm going to do is going to get a bit of this flux on here this is the flux I use it's this kind of um, it's kind of a very tacky flux. Uh, I got it from AliExpress. And I'm just putting it on here to the center pad, just with a little 
uh, just an end of a, a cotton bud, so just not the cotton end, just the, um, the, just the wooden stick. And we're just putting a little, um, little trace of it on there, just so we can, this is going to serve a couple purposes. Uh, one, it'll obviously flow the solder a lot better for me. But number two will additionally help to hold the board in place. Uh, let's see here. Get this out. Uh, man, I have got the world's worst camera set up here. All right, here we go. There we go. All right. So let's go get out one of our boards. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use my um, just going to use my little tweezers just to pick one out here. in here, keep them safe. Okay. Now, hopefully you folks will be able to see that this corner, there's my, where is my pin one dot? It's vanished on me. Um, oh, hang on. I think this is my pin one dot here, is it? Yeah, this is my pin one dot, okay. So, well, you know, whether it is or not, doesn't really matter here in this, because we're just, um, we're just really looking for the solderability, but I'm pretty sure that, oh wait, no, huh, God, I'm an idiot, hold on, is this my pin one dot here, yeah, I think it is, let's blindly assume that it is, what could go wrong, so, I am going to have to take you out from under the microscope here. So I'm going to have to use my own little magnifier headset so that I can uh, line this guy up. So you're going to get to see the bald spot. Apologies for that. I will try to be as brief with, the, with your exposure to same as I can be. Need my little, uh, this is where the tacky flux is really good. Um, I've just been able to line up these pads because they're absolutely perfectly lined up. Let me get my little nose light on. Here we are. Unlike Ru Rudolph, I've got a, except I have a kind of a, a white nose light. So there we are. Pretty straightforward so far. Uh, let's get rid of that. Bring you folks back in under the old microscopy. And uh, let me see if I can see if I can do this a little. See if we can get a bit of a tighter zoom for you here. I don't know really if this is going to work or not, but we'll see. Yeah, this stand is, well, well it'd be helpful if I was standing. It'd be helpful if I wasn't making such an idiot out of it, wouldn't it? Hang on, let me see if we can zoom in here a bit better. I think it's like supposed to have super zoom on it or something, but I don't know. There we go. Now you can see that a bit better, hopefully. Yeah, that's actually. Uh, again, you've seen this on the the um, you've 
So what I'm going to do first of all uh, is I'm going to solder this center pad here. Um, so this is our ground. So I'm going to get my soldering iron. I'm using quite a large tip and quite large solder. So there's no kind of precision. I'm not even going to be wearing any of my magnifiers here for this. I'm literally just going to press on that. Just flow a little bit of solder. Uh, just in underneath it, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully that's actually connected. Now obviously we're going to have to um, level this off with a bit of braid before we put the STM32 on there. But there's that part. Alright, so let's get you down around here the old pin one arena now at this time I am going to put on my little headset and see what life brings us I have not done this before so this may or may not work now unfortunately I keep going to knock my head into the Ooh. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of bridging on the top here because I didn't put any flux on that because I'm an idiot. And you can say congratulations, Damien, you are a Muppet. So let's put a little bit of flux on the just on the top here. Just to help the solder flow because I had totally forgotten this area and its importance to our goals of taking over the Tesla world so let's give that another little bit of a smear there okay super exciting video I know All right let's see if we can get soldering iron back out without wrecking the uh, wrecking the place so I'm going to go here yep yeah. all right so what I'm seeing here and of course you're not able to see it because I'm moving you all the time. Maybe if I had something that could sit on that board and stop it from moving, it would help everyone. Okay, let's try that. see this bit working here okay let's put a big blob on here and see what we get there we go Okay. I think this is going to work. 
Rather than bore you all totally crazy, I'm going to go ahead and solder up the other four sides of this guy here. Um, and we will then proceed to do a few electrical tests on here. Uh, but it's looking really good so far. Stay with us. Alright folks, so I've gone ahead and soldered up all four sides. That took about five minutes. Um, once as Lewis Rossman would say, I used the right amount of flux. Um, I've just cleaned it off with some isopropyl alcohol, so still a little bit wet from that. Uh, but, this little baby so far has just soldered on there absolutely perfectly. Um, I got absolutely no bridges with this. It, um, it, just, it just drag soldered uh, absolutely perfectly. Now, what we need to do now is we really need to determine uh, if we have good electrical contact here. Because keep in mind, we are basically soldering the bottom pads uh, to the, basically the bottom pads of the adapter board uh, to, the, to the main board, let's call it. Um, now I did get my alignment a little bit off there, as you will see, down to that corner. Uh, I do need to get a slightly better solder fillet on this side. This side has uh, basically filleted really nicely for me. So I do need to kind of practice a bit, which is why we're doing this here with this dummy board before we go right at the inverter. Um, so I'm going to do a little electrical test now. Fortunately my Keysight license for the bench view on the meter has expired so you'll just have to uh, you'll just have to listen for the beep. Um, so let's let's turn on the bench meter here. Don't need you Mr. Power Supply, you can go away. So, and I guess there's no, you know, there's no real better way to know if we've got a connection uh, than obviously to put an STM32 on here and, you know, try and get it to do things for us, which is definitely something we will do. We're not going to be jumping straight into the drive unit with this thing. Uh, we are going to test this. Um... In real life, we'll use this demo board as a, as I guess a, um, a kind of a surrogate for the, the Model Three, uh, drive unit. So let's go ahead and do, I guess, the most basic thing: continuity. Uh, so I don't really know how this board works, but I'm guessing this is some kind of a ground connection here. Oh, hang on, here's the ground, there's loads of capacitors here, so these must be ground. Yeah, there's our ground. We got ground on this guy. And so we should have ground on one of our... Yeah, there it is. Got ground on this little op-amp chip. And we should have some grounds here, yeah, on our uh, STM32. Go. I think some of the caps here will have ground on them, yeah. Here, I might as well be showing you guys this stuff and be seeing anything particularly exciting under the scope. Um, but I can just, there's a ground there. Okay. Um, so there's going to be other stuff like there's a there's a crystal oscillator here. I should be able to. There's a crystal here. I presume it's coming around somewhere. 
sun is shining. There's a crystal. There's a crystal here. I don't know. Oh, here it goes. Oh yeah, there it is. We got our crystal on our STM32. Is that in the right spot? Yes, it is, because that's our pin one. Our crystal should be right about here. Sorry again, you're not seeing this, folks. Let's get you uh, better positioned. Yes, okay, there's pin. There's the pin one dot. And our crystal is showing up here on that pin. And I am going to have to do a little bit of redesign on the on the board itself before we commit to um, before we commit to going full tilt with the drive unit. But anyway, this video is probably way too long as it is. Anywho, so. Yeah, that's uh, soldering, just first attempt, and uh, yeah, it <laughs> it just went on there perfectly for me. Um, so yeah, electrical testing. One of these boards, I get it put in properly, and we'll um, we'll be back for that. Okay, folks. Uh, so that is it for our. Uh, Model 3 drive unit update. Uh, when we come back, uh, we will be fitting the mod board uh, to not only the rear drive unit inverter, but the front drive unit inverter also. And we will be getting some uh, motor spinning. And uh, at that point then, hopefully, once we get the kinks out, we will start to be able to make this little guy available to you. Um, at that time, I've taken the decision that all of the, so the sources uh, for this mod board will be available on GitHub, completely open source, including all of the assembly files and links to PCBWay, uh, where you can get them made yourself if you so wish. Um, like I say, and probably have said it too many times by now to have any credibility left, but uh, really, really grateful to PCBWay for making this happen. And uh, I hope to be able to both give them some of my own business and drive some of your business to them as well. So, um, just wanted to finish up on one little note um, that... I guess there is going to be some, and there has been even, uh, I posted some kind of teaser pictures of what I'm doing here on social media and uh, a few other places. And uh, in certain aspects, if you'll, um, uh, what would be the best way to put it, it's about as welcome as flatulence in a spacesuit. Um, and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was actually quite funny in uh, in certain ways. Um, folks, what I'm doing here is my way of hacking, cracking, reverse engineering, whatever way, to, you know, whatever phrases or words that you want to use. Um, it's my way to do, to do this. I take responsibility for that. I don't attempt to, uh, I don't promote this on anything other than its own mer merits. And if you don't like it, then many other solutions out there and uh, feel free to use them. So, um, like I say, I do expect there to be some, um, I guess what would be the word? Uh, uh, what does what the word the CIA use? Uh, blowback. Yes, blowback on this. But anyway, all part of the struggle. So we'll leave you there. Final thanks to PCB way, um, and we will 
be back with this. I'm not going to say when because whenever I do that, uh, I usually end up not making a particular date or whatever. So, all right. As always, links in the description to yes, PCB way and all the other usual suspects, um, open inverter forum, Patreon and PayPal in case you wish to support me. For God's sake, don't. And I just do more of this stuff. Um, what else have we got for you? No, I, I think that's it. I think, I think that's really it. Um, don't like, don't share. And for Pete's sake, don't subscribe to this loser channel. And uh, until we see you in the next video, then. Um, happy advanced PCB design.